Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at amplitude, wavelength, labelling waves and we're going to finish with a summary. So we're going to start off by talking about something called wave amplitude and we want to understand what the amplitude of a wave is and how we can find it. A wave is made up of oscillations which cause the displacement of a point from its equilibrium position. So for example, we've looked at electromagnetic waves and mechanical waves. So on both these diagrams of a mechanical wave and an electromagnetic wave, we can see that there's an equilibrium position. So the purple line shows the equilibrium position of the mechanical wave and this black arrow shows the equilibrium position of the electromagnetic wave. And for the electromagnetic wave, we can see that there's a displacement of the electric field and also the magnetic field from the equilibrium position. And on our mechanical wave, we can see that the water particles experience a displacement from the equilibrium position. Displacement is a vector quantity. We need to specify both the distance and direction of an oscillation from the equilibrium position. So for example, with displacement, we need to define one direction as positive and one direction as negative. So in this case, we might define this direction as positive and the opposite direction as negative. So on our diagram of an electromagnetic wave, this means that this direction is going to have a positive displacement. Whereas if we measure the displacement in the opposite direction, it's going to be negative. And this is only dependent on which direction you choose to define as positive or negative. You can't work it out just from looking at the wave. You just need to define one of the two directions and as long as we stick to the direction we define then we won't make any mistakes when solving problems. The displacement of each point along the wave ranges from zero to a maximum over time. So we can either use a displacement distance graph or a displacement time graph to see this. So we put displacement on the y-axis in both cases, and this is measured in meters. And then on the x-axis, we can either have distance in meters or we can have time in seconds. And in this case, we're actually going to get the same graph. So we can see how the displacement of the wave varies. So for example, here we have a maximum at two meters. That's a point of maximum displacement. Then we can also measure the displacement at this point here. So if we measure it along, we can see that here we have a displacement of minus one meters, noting the negative sign because it's in the negative direction. And then we can see at this point here, we have zero displacement. So we can see that as time passes, the displacement of the wave from the equilibrium position varies, and we can see this on a graph. The magnitude of the maximum displacement is the same in both directions. It is known as the amplitude of the wave. The amplitude of a wave is the magnitude of the maximum displacement from equilibrium of a point on the wave. So we can mark on the amplitudes on this wave. So it's the point with maximum magnitude of displacement. So that means it can be in the positive direction, as shown here, but also in the negative, because we're looking at the magnitude of the displacement. And if we read off the value that we have for the displacement at all of these points, we can see that here the displacement is 2 and in the negative direction is minus 2, but we're interested in the magnitude. So that tells us that the amplitude of this particular wave is 2 metres. We label the points of maximum displacement along the wave as the peaks and the troughs. So the points of maximum displacement are the peaks, and the points where we have minimum displacement, so the lowest points, are called troughs. So that's what we call these points of maximum and minimum displacement. 
that amplitude is the distance between the equilibrium position and either a wave peak or a wave trough. So we said these were our two peaks on this wave and then these were our two troughs. So to get the amplitude, we just need to measure the distance from this peak to the equilibrium position or we can measure the distance from this trough to the equilibrium position and that will give us the amplitude of the wave. So now we're going to learn about another property of waves which is its wavelength. So this is another thing that we can find and measure for a particular wave. It is useful to know the physical size of a wave. The length of an oscillation is known as the wavelength. The wavelength is the distance between two adjacent points on the wave that have the same displacement and velocity at one instant. So for example, if we consider a displacement distance graph, we can actually mark on one oscillation. So one oscillation is going to be this here because we can see that after this point, we just have a repeat of what has just happened. So to find one oscillation, you just need to find one complete cycle. So one unit that you can then repeat to get the rest of the wave. And the length of this oscillation is the wavelength. And we just said that this orange line shows us one oscillation. We can find the wavelength using points along the wave at any given displacement by using this definition. So we need to find adjacent points with the same displacement. So for example, we can draw in a line of constant displacement on our graph. So this line here shows constant displacement. And we can actually choose any horizontal line on this graph to show points of constant displacement. We've just chosen this one. And on this line, these are the points with the same displacement. So we found our points of constant displacement. However, all these points aren't actually at the same point on the wave cycle. So all the points along a horizontal line have the same displacement, but the velocity of the particles have varying directions. So we not only need to think about the displacement, but also the velocity of the particles. So we said that these four points all have the same displacement. However, if we look at the velocity, we can see that for this point, the velocity is going upwards, whereas this point here, the velocity is downwards. So that means that these two points aren't at the same point in the wave cycle because they've got different velocities. However, if we look at these two points here, we can see that this point is moving with a velocity upwards and this point is moving with a velocity downwards. So we said for wavelength, we need two points with the same displacement and same velocity and then to measure the distance between them. So that means we've got these two points here or these two points here. So that means our wavelength is given by this length here, the distance between these two points, or as well, the distance between these two points. And to represent wavelength, we use the Greek letter lambda. So that's this symbol here. The simplest choice for two adjacent points with the same displacement and velocity is two neighbouring peaks or troughs. So for example, these two peaks here have the same displacement and the same velocity. So we can measure the distance between them to find the wavelength. Likewise, these two troughs have the same displacement and also the same velocity. So we can measure the distance between them as well. And this is because at these points, the displacement is maximum and the velocity is zero. So at these points, we've got zero velocity, which is why their velocities are the same. So we can measure the wavelength lambda. And the other reason why it's good to use two peaks or two troughs is because in one wave cycle, we only ever have one peak, so one point with that displacement, and one trough, so one trough with this displacement here. 
Whereas with the other points we saw on a line of constant displacement, we have more than one point within a cycle that has that displacement. So by choosing a peak and a trough, we don't actually technically have to think about the velocity, although it's good to also know that the velocity is zero when we have a peak or a trough. And the displacement at these peaks and at these troughs gives us the amplitude as well, remember. So that's what we mean by capital A, amplitude. So now that we know how to find the wavelength and the amplitude of a wave, and we've also looked at peaks and troughs, we can think about labelling waves. We can now label the peaks, troughs, wavelength and amplitude on a displacement distance graph. So we put displacement on the y-axis and distance on the x-axis. So our peaks are the points of highest displacement, so these two points here. Our troughs are our points of minimum displacement, so they're these points here. Then our amplitude is our displacement with the maximum magnitude. So this here we can label as the amplitude. However, we can also label this as the amplitude of our wave as well as this, because remember, although the troughs technically have the minimum displacement, if we think about the magnitude of their displacement, it has a maximum value. And then finally, we can wait, label the wavelength as the distance between these two peaks. And again, we could use the distance between these two troughs or the distance between any two points that are at the same point in the wave cycle of adjacent waves. So they just need to have the same displacement and velocity and be in adjacent cycles. So now let's try out an example. What is the amplitude and wavelength of the wave given below? So this is the wave we've been given and we want to find its amplitude and its wavelength. Our first step is to label the equilibrium position and the peaks of the wave. So this purple line shows us the equilibrium position. And then we know that the peaks are the points of maximum displacement. So these two points here are our peaks. And the reason why we're marking on the peaks is they're going to be very helpful to find both the amplitude and the wavelength. And that's because the peak is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium. So we can do a line from the peak to the equilibrium position to give us the amplitude. But then we've also seen that the distance between two adjacent peaks is the wavelength. So we can use them to work out these two quantities. So now our next step is to draw on the amplitude. The simplest way is the distance from the equilibrium to a peak. So we've said this is why we're marking on our peaks because we can find the amplitude by drawing a line from the peak to equilibrium. So this distance here gives us our amplitude, A. Our third step is to measure the amplitude. So the amplitude, A, is going to be equal to, so we need to have a look at our graph, we can see that our peak is at a displacement of 4 metres, and that our equilibrium position is at a displacement of two meters here. So we need the difference between the two. So in order to find this, we're going to do four minus two. And that gives us our amplitude as two meters. Our fourth step is to draw on the wavelength. The simplest way is the distance between two adjacent peaks. So that's another reason why we draw on the peaks, to easily find the wavelength. Because to find the wavelength, all we need to do is to measure the distance between these two peaks. Because they're both at the same point in the wave cycle. And now our final step is to just measure the wavelength. So the wavelength lambda is going to be equal to the distance between the two peaks. So we can see that the second peak is at a distance of 70 metres and the first peak is at a distance of 30 metres, so we need to find the difference between the two. So that means the wavelength will be given by 70 minus 30. So the wavelength is 40 metres. Hey guys, 
I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.